All right. Um, Sound, yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Sean Duby. I'm with Dell. Uh, with me is Cliff Dubay with uh, Intel. And we are part of the larger DCMHS group. And we're going to talk this morning about adding 48 volt uh, support into the family of DCMHS. And also uh, supporting the slide deck, but not with us, is Owen Kidd. He, uh, uh, Owen and Clifford have been leading up this effort with uh, building out the 48-volt architecture for DCMHS. And let's get into what exactly this is. So first off, quick reminder of DCMHS. Uh, DCMHS, amongst other things, is striving to have interoperability of HPMs with platforms. HPMs are the host processor module, also known as the motherboard. Um, we're uh, ha striving to have any compliant HPM to be able to drop into place with a platform that is DCMHS compliant. Now. Going along with that is we've got the changes going on in the industry. 12 volts has been the predominant power distribution voltage for a long time. Uh, 48 volt, though, is ramping up. We've got open rack, especially open rack V3, that is based on 48 volt. We have accelerators that are increasingly uh, using 48 volt. So um, OAI is a great example of that. And, um, and so we expect going forward, we will see more and more motherboards that are, instead of taking in 12 volts directly, we'll be taking in 48 volts and then either doing conversion to 12 or any of the intermediate voltages or even doing the conversion from 48 volts down to uh, 1 volt, 1.8 volt needed by the CPUs. And hopefully everybody saw the Google Microsoft presentation yesterday on their efforts on building out uh, specifications for uh, modules supporting this. All right, so let's, uh, let's go on the next slide. Okay, so from a scope and requirement standpoint, um, again, we want to have uh, HPMs that can drop into any DCMHS compliance system. Uh, we want it to support directly open rack V3 platforms, but it's not just open rack. So if you have local 48 volt power supplies, uh, we do MCRPS. The DCMHS uh, specification for power supplies does support 48 volt output. Um, we still want to have compatibility we, uh, with, uh, within our platforms. You may have a platform that takes a 12 volt HPM or a 48 volt HPM. We want to have the compatibility of switching back and forth. Uh, and then likewise with peripherals, some peripherals will continue to be 12 volt based, other peripherals will be 48 volt based. Um, and then as we are continuing our efforts with shared infrastructure within DCMHS, later on this morning we'll have a presentation on MSIF. Uh, this is our effort in moving forward on how we extend the modular hardware system to support shared infrastructure systems. These are chassis that have multiple compute nodes that are individually serviceable, per, uh, peripherals that are individually serviceable uh, amongst the multi-node. We want to comprehend that as well. One last thing that's not on the slide is when we say 48 volts, it is the generalized version, 48 volts through 60 volts, because there is going to be a range for the foreseeable future of 48 volt systems, 54 volt systems. Uh, we want to support both, and that comes down to dialing in what's the output voltage of the power supply. Okay, good morning. So, just like we did for 12 volt with MPIC, we are proposing to do the same where we standardize, we define and standardize interface requirements for 48 volt PDBs, 48 volt peripherals, and 48 volt HPMs. The 48 volt PDBs, because the power delivery and management are different between 48 volt HPMs and 12 volt HPMs, we don't expect those PDBs to be exactly the same or interchangeable. For the 48 volt peripherals, we are defining them to be similar to the 12 volt peripheral, but include, uh, but are updated for to 48 volts as well as a new connector. So 
let's start out with the standardizing interfaces will be done through several connectors. The first is the dedicated 48 volt supply connector. It's defined as a vertical connector with a straight pl plug. It's defined as uh, including the open rack V3 um, connections or local equivalent. So those would be the 48 volt, the ground, the sense, and the sense return. And then PDBs or HPMs that have this connector on them as an input would be required to have a hot plug controller circuit that is enabled or disabled via the sense circuit for compliance with the open rack V3. And then the target power for this connector is about 3,300 watts at the open rack V3 46 volt minimum. The second connector shown in yellow is a 48 volt pick power connector. It is similar but is a vertical connector, a vertical header or a right angle header with a straight plug. And that one includes 48 volt primary, ground, and all the sideband signals that are defined in the existing MPIC pick power specification, you know, pick power definition. And the 48 volt, the 48 volt is defined, primary is defined as the output of either the local hot plug control circuit or the output of an MCRPS um, supply, and it would be a ramp controlled uh, output. The target power for this, come, it, because it comes in two different sizes, we're, we're looking at an output or a target power delivery of 3,300 watts or 23, roughly 2,350 watts. Um, then next, the next connector that needs to be defined is a 48, uh, PDB management connector for use with the dedicated, 40, dedicated supply connectors. This is defined as carrying all the same signals as the existing PDB management connector, but adds the additional signals because the 48 volt HPM doesn't use the 12 volt pick power connection between the PDB and the, and the HPM. And in 12 volt, those are used to help manage, I don't know why. Uh, th those are used to help manage the, the PDB. So, oh, I guess before we go, before we go on, the, the uh, well, let's, let's, so for the open rack V3 solutions, what you'll see is you see a 48 volt open rack V3 supply powering a, a 48 volt PDB. The 48 volt PDB then supplies 12 volt HPMs and 12 volt peripherals using the exact same definition as the existing MPEC specification. And then it also includes the new connector uh, for 48 volts to manage peripherals. Then on the right, you'll see the, the 48 volt powering a the open rack V3 voltage powering a 48 volt HPM. That also provide, powers an optional PDB for the 48 volt HPM. The PDB is optional as well as the 12 volt, 48 volt to 12 volt VR on the PDB is also optional. And What's new for 48 volts is that it's possible to have more than one 12 volt primary or more than one 48 volt primary domain. So it's not recommended, basically it's not allowed to share across those domains. Okay, for the MCRPS solution, a PDB is always required. 
the hot swap circuits on the PDB are optional, and when using a 48 volt HPM, the, tw the 12 volt VR is also optional on the 48 volt on the, on the PDB. And again, sharing across the, PD the domains is not allowed. Okay, and then um, as the last kind of category of solutions is the shared infrastructure solutions. Um, this is a case that's a little bit different because we have the overall chassis that houses multiple server sleds. Uh, the overall chassis will be the one that either hosts the local power supplies or plugs in through uh, in an open rack solution to the bus bar. So there's usage of 48 volt that may be at the chassis level, uh, such as running fans or uh, down regulation to 12 volts. But then it's a choice of the chassis designer whether they are passing 12 volts to the compute sleds uh, for a legacy type of design or passing 48 volt uh, to the, the compute sleds uh, where it can then either be used directly as 48 with the HPMs or down regulated uh, to 12 volts. Um, the down regulation is the, the picture that's shown on the left uh, in which 48 volts is distributed to the compute sleds, but then a power distribution board down regulates to 12 before feeding it to the HPM. Then on the right side, we have H, uh, HPMs that are directly using 48 volts, and that's where the, the voltage uh, line can be passed directly to the sleds or to the HPMs to be used directly. So again, on MSIF, uh, the Shared Infrastructure Solution, uh, we're going to be talking more about it later on this morning. Uh, so here's context uh, for uh, when, you get it, when we get into that later on. OK, so wrapping up, um, we are looking to enable 48 volts from a timing standpoint. We want to align the specs to be aligned with the scalable uh, Dino specs. Again, we're going to be talking more about that later on this morning. Uh, so it is when we have the new HPM form factors fully ratified, uh, that also will be coincident with when we have 48 uh, volt support or recommended architecture so that we can get this interchangeability, intercompatibility between HPMs and platforms. Any, and of course, we always look for feedback. Uh, any questions uh, for us today? All right, uh, John may have a question here. You mentioned that the connector is going to change. Do you have any ideas is it just going to be a different key on the same connector or a different color to differentiate it? So far, we haven't selected any of those three connectors, um, but the idea is it would for sure be different keying, and we are opening it up. The, the goal is to open it up to the the connector industry and reach out to connector vendors and see what, uh, what the best option is uh, for 48 volt and OCP. Yes, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, so my question about uh, the power elements like the 48 to 12 converter and also controllers. So uh, we see some kind of, I don't know, uh, maybe lack of as a um, well-planned uh, common footprint uh, component level for those devices in compared to like CPU VR, for example. Uh, so is there consideration when we define the, uh, this power architecture, taking the uh, supply continuity into consideration and it passed to uh, easy? Yeah, the, um, okay, so what the question is, are, are we considering any type of standardization of the, the regulation? Um, as part of DCMHS, uh, no, we're not. The reason for that is that we want to define the envelope, the, the compatibility of HPMs with the platform and with other subsystems. We, though, I would say that we highly encourage other other parts of OCP to tackle that problem. Um, Google, Microsoft, for example, presented yesterday. They have their 
uh, specification, and I don't, I don't remember exactly the details that they went. Um, I know that there are other considerations for other standards within the industry, so I think it's a great thing, but at the same time, we want to encourage innovation, and within DCMHS, that's what we want to be careful about, of not over-specifying to the extent that we prevent innovation, because there's going to be ideas that we just can't think of. So great to let the, the market go after this. All right, uh, if no other questions, we want to thank you for joining us on a super early, the first event of the day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you throughout the day.